This is the Ford Territory. The first time I saw this was two years ago, and I remember being completely blown away by it. It offered features that you couldn't get from crossovers that were selling for even 2 billion pesos at the time. Yeah, I was so impressed by it that um, it colored my perception of other crossovers at the time. Kaya so I had negative reviews at the time. I named this the best crossover of 2020 and also 2021. And it looks like a lot of people agreed with me because this is one of the best selling crossovers in this price bracket. Ford has so far sold 10,000 units, which is very impressive. But it's been two years. Is it still worth buying in 2022? Let's find out. First, let's talk about the styling. Now, two years isn't exactly enough time to make a car look dated. So, yeah, it still looks current, unsurprisingly. What I like about the Territory's design is that I think it's right at the Goldilocks zone. It neither looks overstyled nor bland looking. Yeah, you don't get aggressive aero elements, but you do get these massive fenders which give it a really macho and really wide look. I like the wheels. The size is just perfect to, to fill the wheel well. And also the design looks classy. Um, I don't think this aims for sporty. It's, a, it's more of a classy slash macho look. So you've probably heard this being compared to the, to the Range Rover Evoque. And I definitely see the, the resemblance. Um, you get this sloping roof and a floating roof design. And you get these straight up shop lines. It looks like it's inspired by the Evoque, but it doesn't look like an exact copy. And like a car with a nice behind. And the Ford Territory does have a pretty sexy looking rear end. It looks premium, almost not overstyled. Like I said in my review, I'm not really a fan of the fake exhaust steps over there. I wish they were real or I wish they just didn't exist. But yeah, I'm nitpicking. The Ford Territory comes with almost every feature that you could get from its competitors, except that you don't get a power liftgate. So this is a manual liftgate. A power liftgate would have been nice, but it's not really very heavy. So it's something that I can live with. The Ford Territory is actually classified as a compact crossover. So this has more space than some crossovers that it's being compared to, like the Geely Cool Ray and the Chang'an CS35. Does this interior look dated? And uh, no, it doesn't. It still looks current. And if you compare this to Japanese crossovers or crossovers from mainstream bands, I think this looks borderline luxurious. Compared to other Chinese bands, I think this is still up there. Although I think that instrument cluster is starting to look pretty small. I'm not gonna go into detail because I've reviewed this already. But everything here still feels very premium. The dashboard is mostly covered in soft touch materials. Like this right here is soft touch. This is leather wrapped. Even this is soft touch. Soft touch, soft touch, leather wrapped. They get a nice leather wrapped steering wheel. Uh, the driver's seat is also leather wrapped. It's power adjustable and it gets adjustable lumbar support. Unfortunately, the passenger seat only has manual adjustment. This also gets a wireless phone charger, a 360 camera. Yes, yeah, so I just wish that it came with actual physical buttons for the, for the climate control. Because you have to go through the infotainment screen to ask the, the aircon controls. Aside from that, I love everything about the interior of the car. The back seat of the Territory is one of the most spacious in its class. I have plenty of legroom. Headroom is not bad. You get a foldable armrest with two cup holders, two air vents, one USB port, and you have a panoramic sunroof on top of your head. Yeah, this definitely doesn't feel like a budget car's interior. I've done a review of the Territory before where I talked about the driving characteristics. 
If you haven't seen it yet, you can click on the link above. If you'd rather not watch it, let me just summarize. The territory feels very refined. It has the lightest steering of any car that I've ever driven. NVH and comfort levels are very good. And even up until now, it still holds up. The Ford Territory is the most complete crossover from a mainstream brand under 2 billion pesos. Its list of features is so long that it'll cover the entire screen. It's even more feature-packed than some Chinese crossovers that are selling at the same price. So Ford didn't just spec this to compete, they spec this to dominate. A lot of these electronic gizmos are nice to have, but there are two features of the territory that I think are very important. When the territory was launched two years ago, it was the first crossover that came with adaptive cruise and automatic emergency braking under 2 billion pesos. And this sold for just 1.3. I'm a huge fan of both features. Some people are confused between adaptive cruise and automatic braking. So let me explain the difference. Automatic emergency braking or forward collision mitigation is something that is automatically turned on by default. It only activates during emergency situations. Like if the car senses that you're about to get into a collision, the first thing it does is it gives you an audible warning. If you still don't step on the brakes, it will automatically preload the brakes for you. So even if you just lightly step on the brakes, the brakes will automatically apply more force. But if you still don't step on the brakes, the car will automatically apply the brakes for you. Now that happens at the very last minute. I think it should be made standard in more cars nowadays, especially those that sell above 1.2 billion pesos. Uh, I think it'll help prevent a lot of accidents, especially among uh, newer drivers. Now, adaptive cruise control is something that you have to turn on. Some people like using adaptive cruise on the highway. I think it's even more useful in city traffic. So when you're in stop and go traffic, your feet do a lot of work. You have to step on the brakes, on the gas. But if you have adaptive cruise turned on, it's like being a passenger in the driver's seat. Okay, so let me show you how adaptive cruise works. <clears throat> so you don't have any buttons on the steering wheel for, for activating adaptive cruise. Instead, you have a stock over here behind the steering wheel. It's not the most intuitive thing out there, but once you learn how to use it, it's second nature. So I'm going to put this on my knee and you can see if I'm using my feet or not. So right now we're in very heavy traffic along Etza and they have adaptive cruise turned on. Yeah, as long as you don't remain stopped for more than three or five seconds, it will automatically resume. Now, if you remain stopped for more than three or five seconds, you just have to lightly tap on the gas pedal for it to resume. Imagine driving from Makati to QC in this traffic. It's it's gonna be very tiring. And adaptive cruise will definitely help a lot. But of course, this is called driver assist for a reason. It's not autopilot. So you always have to have your attention on the road. And your feet always have to be somewhere near the gas pedal or the brake pedal. So you're always ready to intervene if ever if you if ever you have to. So on, so on straight traffic like this, I find that it's almost 100% reliable. Um, it becomes necessary to intervene when we must be seeing it na motor. Yeah, that's mostly it, bro. As long as everyone is on their proper lane, it's almost 100% reliable. Like you don't have to intervene. You don't have to use your feet. Um, the difference between braking during adaptive cruise and braking during ad 
and braking during um, automatic emergency braking is that braking during adaptive cruise is a lot more gradual. So even from afar, you can feel the brake, you can feel the brakes working, uh, and it's very gradual. Hindi ka susubsob unless the car in front of you suddenly steps on the brakes. Yeah, um, I'm a huge fan of adaptive cruise. It's not, it's not a necessity like automatic braking, but I think it definitely helps reduce driver fatigue. Back in 2020, Chinese brands brought high tech and premium to a mass market level. They introduced high resolution 360 cameras, premium interiors, panoramic sunroofs, power seats, etc. at prices that were once considered low budget. But you still had to pay a premium if you wanted automatic braking and adaptive cruise. Those features are what the territory brought to the mass market. At 1.29 million pesos, it was the cheapest vehicle of any type that offered those features. Now in 2022, we can get those features and crossovers that sell at a more accessible price. We have the Honda HRV and the Chang'an CS35, both of which can be bought for less than 1.5 million pesos. But even though you can get individual features of the territory on other crossovers, the full set of features of the territory is still very hard to beat. So, is it still worth buying in 2022? Hell yeah! I think this is still the best equipped crossover below 1.5 million pesos. To get something that's just as well equipped, you'd have to spend over 1.6 million pesos for a Cherry Tigo 8 Pro. If you want something from a mainstream Japanese or American brand, good luck! finding anything under 2 billion pesos. So in 2022, the Ford Territory is still the crossover to beat. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video.